it is believed that approximately 2,000 years before the birth of Christ, mankind would fuse human reason and nature's ability to fly into a breathtaking art form and an efficacious hunting partnership, giving birth to a sport that would endure the millennia. Falconry. For the past 4,000 years, man and hawk have been partners. From the fabled glove of Attila the Hun to the royal muse of the medieval aristocracy, raptors have winged their way through history, climbing ever higher to reach an ascending pinnacle in the modern era and the future to come. The renowned medieval historian Robin S. Oggins prefaced his Yale dissertation work, The Kings and Their Hawks, with Falconry was perhaps the most popular form of hunting among the aristocracy. The sport reached its greatest prominence in the legendary hunting grounds of the ancient kings, where it was practiced for sport and for supplementing the pantries of peasantry alike. But with the gusting winds of time, it has drifted into modernity. So what is this sport that passes from generation to generation through the millennia? How does it captivate so thoroughly the hearts and minds of those who discover it? What instills the passion that channels the lifelong energy and devotion of its many artisans? Falconry can be defined as the taking of wild quarry in its natural state and habitat by means of a trained raptor. In essence, falconry is the training of raptors to accept you as a hunting partner and permitting the birds to do what they do every day in the wild but with you as an assistant. It's an unpredictable game of chess in which limited control is exercised by the falconer over the pieces on the board, be it themselves on the ground, their bird in the air, and perhaps their dog on the move. It's the wit and cunning of the falconer as he attempts to design the fate of the prey through an extemporaneous arrangement of nature and humanity into the perfect system of predation. How does the falconer assume the role of chess master? How can he rely on a raptor that erupts so wildly from the glove into the unsolicited freedom of the limitless sky? How does he achieve the ideal of unity between four different species of God's creation all at once to mastermind the perfect hunt? Over the course of the millennia, falconers have developed and honed the skill of positive reinforcement. This is the training method harnessed by falconers in which the falconer keeps food from the raptor until it becomes hungry, and then by offering small bits of meat in conjunction with a whistle or a lure, the falconer can convince the raptor to do what he wants by rewarding correct behavior with a tidbit. Assuming the role as the masters of the skies, raptors cannot be taught by poor treatment or harsh words. Rather, these actions only sow the seeds of distrust and they assure failure in the training of any raptor. It might be necessary to know that falconry is actually a very generic term because falcons only compose a fraction of the raptorial species hunted with. Originally, there were different names for those who flew hawks or eagles instead of falcons. For instance, a hawker was called an ostringer and to this day they are still technically considered that. But time has dictated for the sake of simplicity that all the branches of raptorial hunting can be lumped together into one solid term, falconry. But most versions of falconry incorporate a raptor waiting on you to flush game, followed by a dramatic dive or chase ending with a catch or a knockout strike as the raptor connects with the prey. In falconry, humans take a secondary role similar to a bird dog for an upland game sportsman finding and flushing the birds for the hunter. Falconry is a true partnership between man and nature. With the modernization of the planet, many ancient sports and arts were lost, and the ones that remained only did so by means of austere adaption. So how did the falconer emerge from the shadows of antiquity with a hawk on his fist? What changes were wrought upon a sport so beautiful in its barbaric nature? These are the questions which will continue to evade answering, because at its core, very little has changed about falconry. 
from the equipment used to the names of that very equipment. Time has left many aspects of falconry as they have always been. A dogged persistence has kept the sport in its rawest form, and modernity has only advanced the sport with its measures of preservation and care. However, there are some things that have changed. Today, falconers make use of kites and balloons to exercise and train their falcons. The falcons of today can fly to heights so great that the raptor is visible only with high-power binoculars, and falconers are willing to fly their falcons at these heights without fear of losing them because of the assurance granted by modern radio tracking systems called telemetry. Veterinary discoveries rock the falconry world at an astounding rate. Diseases previously deemed incurable now have cures. Treatments and remedies never before seen have made their way into homes of falconers around the world. The raptors of today live longer and stronger than they ever have before. Falconers today train and fly raptors never seen by falconers of ancient times and these birds only became available after the discovery and exploration of entirely new continents. All of these advances and developments can be attributed only to the passion put forth by falconers the world over. The preservation of raptors and their natural habitats has been an ongoing crusade made possible only by the steadfast work of individuals so driven that any sacrifice for their sport is not sacrifice enough. It is because of the legendary legacy of countless falconers that I am able to introduce to you a sport that will pass on into the future only by the continuing work of future generations. Welcome to the sport of kings.